On this episode of Diesel Insights, you guys have asked for it, twin kits. More properly, sequential turbochargers. How to size them, how they work, how the gas flows, let's get into it. You high horsepower guys know that you can't make the big number with a stock turbocharger. But you also know that when you put those big turbos, 75 mil, 72 mil turbos on your trucks, that they don't tow as well as a stock turbocharger does. You get high EGTs at low RPM, high load scenarios, tendency to surge, especially poor performance at high altitude. That's where the twin turbo kit or the compound turbocharger kit really shines. It's not cheap, but it really bridges the gap between stock turbocharger performance down low and towing performance in big peak horsepower numbers. The compound kit works by keeping both turbochargers in their maps. And what I mean by this is that no one turbocharger has to do all the work. Typically at low RPM and high load scenarios, that big wheel is on the surge line, meaning it's trying to compress more air at low air mass than is possible. And it's gonna do that and it's gonna go choo 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 choo. Right? It's gonna beat up the bearings, it's not gonna be efficient, it's not fun to drive. Under really high load scenarios and high RPM, those smaller turbochargers are out of air. They just can't spin fast enough to compress the air mass at 3,000, 3,500 RPM to make the power that you want to make. So we take the exhaust flow from the small turbocharger and we run it into the turbine of the large turbocharger. And then that large turbocharger creates an artificial atmosphere for the small turbocharger to operate in. So instead of just having ambient pressure, 15 PSI at sea level, now that small turbocharger can pull from 30 PSI or 35 PSI of ambient pressure and all of a sudden becomes a ton more efficient because it's not operating at a really high pressure ratio. The exhaust gas comes out of the head, goes into the manifold and into the secondary turbocharger. That's the small turbocharger or the valley turbocharger on a Duramax. That's going to run that turbine, come out, Go over the crossover pipe to the primary turbocharger. That turbocharger is the large turbocharger. That turbine is going to be driven and then the exhaust is going to go out the downpipe. The air is going to be compressed starting at the primary turbocharger. The large turbocharger is going to create an artificial atmosphere for the secondary turbocharger, forcing air into it. That turbocharger, instead of operating at 15 PSI ambient air pressure, is now going to get the luxury of operating at 20 PSI, 30 PSI, 35 PSI. It's easy work for that turbocharger all of a sudden. It's going to take that compressed air through the system into the intercooler and then into the engine. Let's get into wheel sizing. There's an industry standard. Okay, the industry standard in the aftermarket is stocker twin kit. That means that the stock turbocharger is used in the secondary location and an S475 is used in the primary location. The reason is because the S475 is a monster. You can't beat it. It's cheap and it lasts. Borg Warner S475. Love it. This kit is usually good for about 700 to 750 rear wheel horsepower on a Duramax, a little bit more on a Cummins. It's a nice kit, drives well, tows well, is reasonably inexpensive in the world, right? The temptation amongst aftermarket enthusiasts is to adjust this kit or size it differently. And there are certain scenarios when you should do that, and let's run into those. So, I want to make more horsepower. What do I adjust first? That's always the question, right? I got a twin kit, I want to wait. I want to make more than 750 horsepower. What do I adjust first? The temptation is to put a big turbo in the valley, right? Sell me your Stealth 67 so I can make more horsepower. Don't do that. Don't start there, okay? If you want to make more horsepower on a twin kit, you want to look at the primary turbocharger, the compressor wheel first. Go bigger, okay? Go from an S475 to an S480. The 480 is good for another 40, 50 horsepower, and it's a relatively cheap upgrade. The pushback I usually get in that scenario is, okay, I went to an S480, now don't I have to upsize the compressor wheel in the Valley turbocharger? No, you don't. I would make the argument that you don't have to upsize the wheel in the Valley turbocharger until you go to a 488. So you could probably get away with a 483 and keep the stocker in the Valley. Not ideal, but upsizing the compressor wheel in the small turbocharger is one of the last things I'm going to recommend that you do. If you're going to spend money on the small turbocharger, spend money on the turbine side. Here's why. The turbine side of the small turbocharger is always the first choke point. The compressor wheel has the benefit of pressure ratios working in its favor. The turbine side does not. All the hot exhaust gas 
In fact, the hottest exhaust gas in the system has to go through the smallest opening, which is the exhaust side of the small turbocharger. Here's a VVT. Here's how it operates. Okay, this is full open. So this is all that 750 or 800 rear wheel horsepower has to eventually go through this turbine. It's got nowhere else to go. If you want to make that system operate more smoothly, upsize the turbine side. You're going to see that pressure ratio drop, especially when you get over 3,000 RPM. If you go to like a Stealth 67 G2 exhaust side, or use an LLY if money's tight, but if you use like the LML, which has only a 10 millimeter tall vein, you're really going to see that exhaust side choke up, especially at high RPM. While I got you on the turbine side, I just want to show you one more example. On the Cummins, you have a wastegate option. Okay, so that wastegate you have control over. On the Cummins, I like to recommend you can open up that wastegate slightly, so stock at 7 eighths of an inch. You can take it up to 1 inch with a 1 inch ream. That works slick. I like to put our big turbine on the small turbocharger just so we have all that extra exhaust flow on the small side. Anything I can do to relieve choke on the small side is really what I'm looking to do. I'm not going to concern myself with adjusting the compressor. In fact, I'll tell you a little secret that you might want to know. The only time I recommend hybridizing turbochargers, that is running a Stealth 67 G2 with a 64 front, is on a compound kit. Because you get that quick spool up and you get all the benefits of that small 64 millimeter wheel, but you got the big high flowing turbine side and that works really slick. People are always surprised with how much power you can make on a small turbocharger in the valley. We've already talked about gas flow through the turbine side, but let's see what happens when you're actually using the turbocharger under high load. So here's the vanes, here's a Stealth 67 G2 backside, you got a nice big turbine. So the vanes are closed and they're going to be relatively closed during spool up. That's going to really help the turbocharger come to life. The small turbocharger determines how quickly the system spools up. Don't forget that. As the turbocharger spools up, exhaust energy is going to come out and go to that big turbocharger and that thing's going to come to life. Now as that big turbocharger comes to life, the vane pack is going to open. And as the vane pack opens, it's going to slow the shaft speed down on the small turbocharger, but that big turbocharger is feeding it. All of a sudden, all the exhaust vanes are going to come all the way open. The exhaust energy is going to have kind of a freer ride through the turbine assembly of the small turbocharger and it's not going to be choked up. One of the biggest mistakes you can do is oversizing the compressor wheel. So let's talk about what happens when you do that wrong. Okay, the big compressor wheel. So the bigger the compressor wheel, the slower the shaft spins. Now that's compounded when you have extra load on the front of that compressor. As the load comes up on the front of that compressor, it also slows the shaft down. Not a big deal, right? The, slat, the shaft slows down, the compressor wheel slows down, we're still making power. Well. As the, as the shaft slows down on the front, it slows the turbine down. When you slow the turbine head down, drive pressure comes up. No matter what you do with the vanes, the slower the turbine is spinning, the higher the drive pressure. As drive pressure in the system comes up and starts to overcome boost pressure, we start to get that upside down situation. The turbocharger makes a lot of heat. All of a sudden, we're not making the power we want to make. When you do it right, it's magic. You get all the benefit of this big turbocharger pushing a ton of air up top and keeping things nice and cool and you get all the spool up benefit of that small turbocharger. Remember, big turbocharger dictates how much power you can make, small turbocharger dictates how well the truck spools up. Couple notes just to wrap up. Compound kits have really wide operating ranges, but they're not perfect for every scenario, okay? A kit that works really well off idle to 3,000 RPM is not gonna shine at 4,000 RPM. The drive pressure simply is too high. Remember, we still have that small turbocharger in the valley, and we still have a limitation on the turbine, even if you went upsized a little bit. So let's say you went to the bigger turbine assembly, maybe that got you another three or 400 RPM of safety and good drive pressure and performance. It's still not a 4,000, 4,200 RPM setup. Twin kits and compound kits that make big power up top have really big turbine assemblies in the valley. As far as sizing your fuel system on a twin kit goes, that's really up to you. If you wanna run a factory fuel system, it'll work great with a Stocker 475 kit. I mean, there's really your fueling is gonna be dictated by the power level that you wanna make. If that power level is below the ceiling of the twin kit, I say go for it. One of the big questions we get with compound kits is don't I need head studs? You're always gonna hear somebody who put compound kit on their truck and then day one they blew the head gaskets on the thing. Now typically if you have a compound kit on the truck you can safen up the timing curve, you can keep the truck happy, you can keep it running really well in a power band where it's designed. 
I'm not going to say that it's impossible for you to blow the head gaskets on a compound kit, and the reality is that it's probably a slightly more likely than it is on a single kit. Higher boost means higher cylinder pressure, means higher in-cylinder heat, means more potential to blow the head gaskets. True. Are you going to for sure blow the head gaskets on day one? I would say unlikely. Most guys have a really positive experience with a compound kit and get a long life out of their truck. Really depends on how you treat the thing and if you're abusing it. If you enjoy Diesel Insights, like, subscribe to the channel, man. If you have more questions, post them in the comments below. I, Nick Pregnance, will be there to answer some of your questions. Thanks for watching.